So yes, good morning to you. Um, it is absolutely true that uh, the top line has increased uh, by 4%, uh, which is very good, uh, fueled by the growth in our preferred segments, uh, which is the commercial insurance, health and protection. This has led uh, to a result increase, an operational result increase of uh, 7%, which is very good uh, and certainly also fueled um, by uh, the uh, integrated acquisition of XL that has uh, really done well. It is absolutely true that uh, the net income uh, has uh, gone back, but this is related to two, to two factors. One uh, is the deconsolidation of AXA Equitable, which was uh, a, an event uh, that was uh, already announced. And secondly, an adjustment, an accounting adjustment uh, of uh, derivatives, um, which uh, has no impact on our dividend payment. And on the, contra on, on the contrary, uh, our shareholder equity has increased. I want to take it back to that particular U.S. life insurance business, the AXA Equitable Holdings. And you're obviously looking to offload your stake in that company. Uh, are you finding market conditions challenging there? And the reason I ask, because your competitor, you know, Swiss Re, wanted to uh, offer uh, it's an IPO for its U.K. reassurance business, uh, but they had to pull that due to challenging market conditions. So how are you seeing things in the U.S. right now? No, we've announced uh, this uh, strategic decision last year, which was based on our overall strategy uh, to reduce our exposure uh, to financial risks and shift more to technical risks. And uh, you can also see in the results that 80% um, uh, of uh, our results are driven by technical risks. We've announced, uh, we've IPO'd AXA Equitable last year on the 10th of May for $20. And you have seen that the uh, share price uh, has remained very stable, is today uh, above uh, the issue price and uh, all the sell downs we have done uh, have been at uh, or above the issue price. So um, we are very happy the way uh, it has gone. We are very happy the way uh, this company has performed. And uh, as you said, we will continue our journey uh, of the sell downs uh, to, uh, to continue and to complete the strategic shift from financial risk towards technical risks. Uh, Thomas, congratulations on your combined ratios and your performance in insurance division. Uh, I can see a whole host of measures that are moving in the right direction. Not so, sir, though, on investment management as well. And I'm really worried about the financial environment in Europe and what the ECB sees it needs to do as well. I'm looking at uh, underlying cost income ratios increasing to 71.3%. I'm looking at total revenues down 8% as well. It looks to me like an incredibly tough business at the moment. Could you flesh it out for me, sir? Yes, it is absolutely true that uh, the market conditions uh, for the investment management uh, are, are not easy in an environment uh, where there is pressure on, on fees. Um, uh, let me remind you that uh, the investment management for AXA is absolutely strategic. However, uh, it uh, represents uh, a very small portion of uh, the overall. So in total, uh, AXA investment management and the numbers uh, do affect the overall AXA numbers uh, in a, to a very small degree. We have uh, responded uh, to this challenge very early on with uh, a program of uh, reducing our cost and will continue to do so because it is a strategic business for us. And uh, in this business, you have to differentiate uh, two very different trends. One is uh, on the alternative asset side. So, for example, uh, real estate. We are uh, a very strong leader in Europe. This business is performing very well uh, with very nice growth. And we see the pressure more on the fixed income and equity side, where we will continue to take the necessary measures in order to stabilize profitability. Hi, I'm Joanna Bersacci and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.